Always say your prayers. Why you keep stealing my shit? Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel everybody. Um, this feels very awkward because I haven't done this in so long, but I miss you guys so much and I am back and um, I'm still not 100% with this flu and pneumonia virus that's going around, but I am 90% better. So I wanted to come on here because I missed you guys and I wanted to eat this fabulous meal with you. Okay, right here is hot, delicious um, tomato soup. We got homemade grilled cheese sandwiches there on Texas toast. And then I have a delicious little garden salad with um, whole tomatoes. And so I haven't had an appetite at all lately. So um, this is kind of what sounded a little bit decent for right now. So this is what we're eating. And how is everybody? And please stay safe and well. You guys, this flu thing going around is terrible. It's absolutely horrible. Um, two of my children got it from me. I'm gonna put some croutons. Now I'm gonna put some in my soup too. And of course, the coldest water bottle, you guys already know, go to my description box. And I just have water here as well. And um, we'll put those there. I, you know, guys know I don't like bottle ranch, but um, this is the best bottle ranch that I think is good. That's the best. Um, so that's what I'm using. And okay, I'm gonna pray and we are going to start eating. Okay, thank you, Father, for this food. Bless this food and sanctify it by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And always say your prayers. And I want to thank you guys so, so much for praying for me. I can't, it's such a blessing to me. And because of your guys' prayers and your well wishes and kind, loving words, um, I am doing this today with you guys. So thank you very, very much. And my hair is wet. I just got out of the shower. Look, it's not, I just threw it up. I don't care. Anyways, here is the tomato soup. Oh, I love soup when I really don't feel very good. Who doesn't? My mom made this for me, you guys. So, into the soup, you go. Mm. This is on Texas toast and it's so good. Look at that. That got all in my hair too. Oh well. Mm. This is um, Munster cheese in here. It is one of my favorites. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God, so good. 
So yeah, I just got a shower and I threw makeup on because I look like Casper. Um, I didn't do my hair. Mmm. How fast did I eat that first sandwich? Oh my god. Uh, let me tell you. If there's a lot of edits, it's because I'm coughing because I still have a really bad cough. So my last video, you guys remember, I told you that um, I was taking care of my husband because he was sick. Yeah. Well, he had he got the flu shot. He gets the flu shot every year because it's mandatory in the military. They have to have it. So he gets it. And for some reason, every time he gets a shot, it makes him sick. So... He came home not feeling good and mm -mm. that was so good. My family's in the background, so <coughs> so my husband came home and he wasn't feeling good and I don't get the flu shot. I don't believe in it, I don't like it, it scares me, so I don't participate in the flu shot well i think i've changed my mind on that because this has been the worst flu i've ever had in my entire life and i literally felt like felt like i was dying it was very very scary so yeah while i was taking care of him his lasted for like 24 hours and he was over it over it and he was up his merry old way well the two days or the 24 hours i was taking care of him two days whatever 48 um, I got it. I got it from him. So. I didn't think it was a flu. I just thought he had a bad cold because he got the flu shot. So, you know, I was like, it's not the flu, but it was. So that's what took me down. Um, so after he was over it, I was in the kitchen cleaning dinner. And I started feeling like really weak. Like, and I never get weak when I'm cooking or I never get hot and sweaty. Of course, unless like our air is out or something and it's like in the middle of winter. I mean, summer. But just on a normal basis, no, I don't like sweat when I'm cooking or get real tired. Well, during this time, I was cooking dinner. I felt so tired and so out of breath and just like lethargic. And then I started like pouring sweat and I'm like, what the heck? And I was like wiping myself and, you know, fanning myself and I, I couldn't figure out what was going on and I told my husband I said turn on the air I'm I'm burning up please turn on the air and he goes it's 45 degrees outside I'm not turning the air on and he, he comes walking in the kitchen and he sees me drenched in sweat and he goes oh my god are you okay I said no I I'm really tired and I'm hot Mm. So he started fanning me. Um oh my god, thank you. I feel so good. And then I cooked the dinner and I sat down immediately on the couch. I got on my phone and I was just like I didn't I like I something did not feel right. So then my family, the kids and my husband ate and then um I said, babe, I said, I'm going to go lay down. I, I just, I don't know. I'm just so tired. I want to go to bed right now. 
I said, can you put the food up and straighten the kitchen up for me? He goes, yeah, it's okay. He was playing his game. He goes, after I'm done, I'll do that. So I go to bed and, I, and I'm not kidding you, as soon as my head hit the pillow, I turn the TV on because I'm like, okay, I'm going to figure out something to watch. There's water in here too. And it was about five minutes after I laid down and I turned the TV on, I was out. Like I was completely asleep. So... So my husband, like, he was shocked because he came to bed and I'm never asleep before him ever. So he didn't wake me or anything like that. Um, and uh, he just, like, I don't know, watched a movie or something and then he finally went to bed. Well, the next morning I woke up. I woke up and I... I started stretching, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, that sleep felt so good. Because normally I'll go to bed really, really late because I have insomnia issues. And then I will wake up early. That's that's my sleeping schedule. So um, I woke up around like 10, 30, 11. And then as soon as I got up and stretched, I started coughing. And I got up and I went pee, you know. Um, I'm brushing my teeth and I'm like looking in the mirror and I noticed I looked like like a ghost, like sheet white. So I was like, what? And I kind of, I just, something didn't feel right about me. And I kept coughing more, kept coughing more, kept coughing more. And then I got back in bed and I was like, well, I'm, I'm not ready to get up yet. Um, I continued to cough. My cough lasted the entire day. Um, and it wasn't just like a cough here and there. It was like back to back to back. Like I couldn't catch my breath. I was coughing that bad. And... I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, what the heck? My throat felt really dry and itchy and like scratchy. And that's what was making me cough. And I couldn't stop. My husband was overhearing me in the next room. He's like, are you okay? I said, I don't know, I can't stop coughing. I said, my throat is so dry and, it, and it's scratchy and it, it itches. So later on in the day, he went and got me cough medicine because it, it was so bad that it gave me a headache. I couldn't stop. The coughing gave me a headache. Um, it started to hurt my chest, my throat, and <clears throat> I was getting really, really irritated. And I noticed that when I would get up, like I'd, I start to feel dizzy. And let's put this right here. Doesn't that look really good, you guys? Look at that, with the whole tomatoes. So I took cough medicine, it did nothing. It did absolutely nothing. And then ended up taking um, like sleeping medicine, uh, like cold and cough type of stuff. And I went to bed again. And then the next morning, <coughs> that's when I started burning up with fever and my body was aching all over the place and
the coughing got worse so bad mm. oh, this tomato is so sweet really good Then my throat started hurting, my chest started hurting. And um, I was like, my husband came in and checked on me and he's like, oh, you're burning up with fever. He's like, oh my God. I said, yeah, I feel like absolute shit. I feel so bad. Then all of a sudden I was coughing. So he brought me soup. He's like, you need to eat something. I said, I don't want to eat. I don't feel like eating. So he brought me um, soup anyways. So... He's like, just try and eat it. You need to eat something. So I'm like, okay. So I was sitting there and I was trying to eat the soup. And then all of a sudden, my coughing my coughing fit. I thought I was whooping cough at first. I didn't think the flu. And I got, <clears throat> I'm telling you, I couldn't breathe. Then... I put my soup down and I ran to the bathroom because I threw up everywhere. <coughs> yeah, the um look at that guys. The coughing made me throw my soup up, so I threw it up everywhere. And then um I went back to the room and I'm like Babe, I was calling him and I was like crying um because I was just you know I hate that I hate throwing up so he comes in the room he's like what's the matter I said I threw that soup up <laughs> oh my god um I had a 104 temperature he checked it it was 104 and then he's like, I'm going out to get you medicine right now. He goes, wow, like you, you're really, really sick. And so then he went out and got me um, cold and flu. And he got me a nebulizer. Not a nebulizer, what the heck? A humidifier for the room because it's really dry here in El Paso. And it was choking me up. So, you know, he thought. So... He comes back with like the whole freaking pharmacy. I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing? But I couldn't stay awake. I couldn't stop coughing. I was coughing literally with my eyes closed the whole time. And like dozing off and then getting up coughing, dozing off, getting up a coughing. And my body, I was turning left and right. I couldn't get comfortable. My body was hurting so bad. Mmm. And that's what we did for the second day. And then the third day, I could not breathe, you guys. I was like, <sighs> like that. Like I, my lungs wouldn't open up enough or something. I don't know what it was, but I couldn't breathe. I got up and I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My chest felt so tight and I was wheezing. And oh my God. And then on top of all of this, yeah, it is true. Um, the day I started having symptoms of this flu virus thing that is going around <laughs> is the exact same day I started that time of the month. Because remember on my last video, I said I was late. Yeah. So the day I started the symptoms of this flu and um, pneumonia, because I got both, is the day I started my monthly friend. So can you imagine having pneumonia, the flu, and can't you can't breathe, you just can't breathe, um, and being on that, I'm telling you, it, it was like, I told my mom, I said, I think, I, I think somebody cursed me, I think I'm cursed. 
this isn't ha this just doesn't happen to somebody like this just doesn't happen like all of these things at once it was crazy and so finally that night i said i have go i have got to go to the doctor something's wrong with me i thought i was dying i really did um i was about to my husband was about to call 911 because i couldn't catch my breath i couldn't breathe i went into the bathroom turned the hot water on let the steam uh, breathe, breathe in the steam into my lungs, which by the way, made my breathing worse. And my husband told me to do it. He's like, it's going to open your airways. You need to breathe in that, that hot steam. And I'm like, something's not registering. I don't think that's what you're supposed to do if you have breathing problems, but I did it anyway. I was desperate because I could really couldn't catch my breath. And I was crying because I couldn't breathe. No. I came out of the bathroom like 15 minutes later, tears were rolling down. I said, I couldn't even talk enough to get out words because I didn't have enough breath in me. But I told him, I can't breathe. I need to call 911, call 911 like that. And so I instantly opened the front door and I went out front and it was really cold that day. It was like 45. The wind was blowing. And as soon as I walked out there with the air in my face, the cold fresh air like seconds later i started to breathe better and i was like oh my god <sighs> like that i was like that i was like standing in front of people were driving by like staring at me like because i i was crying and my makeup was smeared and i had like you know mascara marks on my face and i was like <sighs> like this so people were actually driving by and they were staring at me i'm like oh my god don't look at me don't look at me but they were concerned. People were concerned driving by. And um, this one girl walking by, she's like, are you okay? Are you okay? I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Oh, my God. It was really embarrassing. But So then I told my husband, I said, finally, after I caught my breath, I was out there for like 40 minutes. Sorry, I had to cut the the phone off for a minute. Oh my god, that scared me. See, I'm out of breath. Just, just from going from here to my kitchen to tell my husband to go get my daughter. She needs to be picked up at school. See, whew. Yeah. you guys, this this is so bad. This virus flu. It's terrible. So anyway, yeah, see, I'm out of breath. Whew. And I'm probably not going to eat a lot, you guys, because I have not had an appetite. But I missed you guys, and I wanted to come on here. Okay, so anyways, the only kids home um, at the time was my youngest daughter, Brooklyn. And um, my husband's like, okay, well, let, let's go to the hospital right now. Get in, the, get in the truck. Let's go. And I said, no, I don't want my daughter around me. I don't want her near me. I don't want her getting this. Um, absolutely not. I said, you stay here with her. I'm going to drive myself to the ER. And I was still trying to catch my breath, but I was better from earlier. He's like, you can barely breathe. You're not driving yourself to the ER. I said, I'm not having my daughter in this car with me. So, so she can get this. No. Mm. So he wasn't happy with the idea. He was really upset. But I insisted. I didn't want my child getting this because it was really bad and I was struggling with it. So I knew that, oh my God, maybe it could kill her. I was that scared. So. I said, no, I'm going myself. So I got in a car and I was like, <sighs> that's how I was breathing. <clears throat> I was, 
even though it was freezing outside you guys it was freezing 45 the wind was blowing really hard to some of you you may be like wow that sounds like perfect weather because <laughs> i know some of you guys live in really frigid places but here in el paso that's really really cold so i got in the car and i was praying i was like lord help me jesus please help me help me catch my breath please help me catch my breath and um i drove myself to the er and um i walked into the er and i immediately went up to the nurse's station you know the check-in and i said um the nurse looked at me and she goes ma'am are you okay and i said just from okay of course you know i already couldn't breathe but walking from the parking lot i i was almost gonna pull up to the emergency room and like leave my car and just take off and go into the er that's what i was gonna do but i was afraid like i don't know because there was nobody around someone was still the car so <laughs> i was like can't do that So walking from the garage hospital parking lot into the emergency room, I was the worst, like, tears were rolling down my face because I thought I was dying. I thought I was dying. I thought I, this is it. I'm going to collapse right here on this uh, hospital emergency room floor. I'm going to collapse right here and this is going to be how I'm going to die because it felt like I was breathing through a straw, but I was trying to, I was trying to breathe that fast through a straw. You know what I'm talking about? This I'm trying to give you like how I felt. And so I go up to the, you know, the nurse and she's like, oh my God, are you okay? And I said, I can't, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I, and I was just sobbing, sobbing. And she goes, oh my God, sit down, sit down, sit down. And so she sat me down. And then um, she immediately took my vital signs and I was dripping in sweat, drenched, like soaking wet with sweat. Um, even though, yeah, I was really cold outside. And so as soon as she took my vital signs, she called for like three other people to come over. They came over and then she like, like everything was a blur to me. I wasn't even paying attention because I was just trying to, trying to stay alive, like trying to breathe. But my blood pressure was sky high. I've never had high blood pressure in my entire life. I've always had really low blood pressure my whole life. Um, my blood pressure was like 145, like over 105 or something like that. It was like stroke level. It was ridiculous. Um, my heart rate was 130. So they will, they brought over a wheelchair. I didn't even sit in that waiting room. Oh, and I had horrible chest pains. I told her my chest hurts so bad. I'm having chest pains. I can't breathe. So I never even went to the emer to the waiting area. Absolutely not. They wheeled over a wheelchair. They put me in it. They wheeled me to the next room. Um, it was still kind of in the waiting area, but it was off, you know, a room off to the to the side. And she's like, um, she's like, ma'am, she goes, remove your shirt right now, please, and lay back. And like, there was no door in this room. It was just a curtain. So... I didn't even know at the time because, my God, I was trying to breathe to stay alive. So I wasn't paying attention, but <coughs> I started taking my shirt off like they were helping me because I really didn't have enough, like a lot of energy. And I was in my bra and I had leggings on and I was over to my right. And like probably 150 people were in the emergency room, in the waiting room, waiting to be seen. And I'm sitting there in my leggings and bra 
And I look over and like, they're all just staring at me. <laughs> like all of them are staring at me. And I'm like, could you close the curtain, please? She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. They were panicked because my blood pressure and my heart rate was so high that they weren't paying attention to, you know, people looking at me in my bra. You know what I mean? Neither was I, but. They slammed the curtain shut. <laughs> I mean, a bra's a bra. It's like a bathing suit, but still. All these people were just staring at me like, hello. Jesus, give me some privacy here. Give me a minute. So then they immediately did an EKG on me. She's like, you need to lay back. Um, and said, I, I can't lay back. I can't breathe. If I lay back, I can't breathe. So she's like, okay, okay. Sit up as, and be as still as you can. They're slapping all these things on me for the EKG. They did the EKG. And then from there, they willed me back to the, you know, one of the rooms back there. <coughs> And then they started doing all these tests. They did blood. I mean, they did tests from my head to my toes. They did urine. They did blood. They did um, EKG. They did an x-ray of my chest. Uh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. They put an IV block in and they started instantly pumping me with fluids. And so they, and they also gave me a breathing treatment instantly. Um, so then my blood work came back and the test came back and mm. salad and soup hmm. the doctor came in I can't eat that last one. Oh heck no I save it for my husband the doctor comes in and says well you are well first this is what she said and it scared the shit of me like why you well how are you gonna start off telling your a patient this you know what i mean she comes in and she goes um well uh, miss hammett she's like um there is a severe no she goes your blood work is severely messed up like there's a lot of things off with your blood work and i had this breathing you know treatment in my mouth and I couldn't, so I couldn't talk. And I'm like, like, what do you mean? You know, she goes, I know you can't talk right now. I'm going to read what's going on. She said, you are severely dehydrated. Um, like really, really bad. That's why we're going to give you four pints of fluid before anything else. So they, they'd already started pumping me full of fluid. She said also, because you're so dehydrated, your sodium level is extremely high. She said, um, yeah, it's, you have three times the amount of sodium in your blood, um, or in your body, whatever, than you should. And I'm like, what? She said, that's probably has a lot to do with why you're so dehydrated is because your sodium is so high. Also. She's like, your hemoglobin uh, count is a seven. Um, you're extremely anemic and um, your blood sugar is a little high. She goes, not anything to be concerned about or even really mention, but I just want to let you know it's a little tiny bit high. And I'm thinking, I don't even eat sweets. What the hell? Well, anyways. Um, but... Oh, and then she's also said your vitamin D is extremely low. Um, and I 
I think that's, I think it's all she said, but she said, we're going to get you fixed up. We're going to get your blood work looking pristine before you leave here. And you need a lot of breathing treatments, your oxygen level, my oxygen level. Oh, the camera's shaking. I don't know why. I can't remember what my oxygen level was at, but it was so low. It scared them. My oxygen was really low. Um, my heart rate was super high. My blood pressure was super high. Um, <clears throat> and she said, this is all in correlation to how sick you are. Um, so yeah, then she came back and said, uh, yeah, you have pneumonia and you tested positive for the flu. So I had both. And I don't ever, ever get sick. And I know I've read some comments that some people are like, you're always sick. No, that's not true. I've had my YouTube channel now for a year and a half and three times in a year and a half, I've gotten sick. Twice was just a normal, regular cold. No big deal, everybody gets colds. And this third time is right now and was the flu and pneumonia. And this was really bad. And my husband brought it home to me. So, yeah. No, I hardly ever get sick. So when I got this sickness, my body just like freaked out and didn't know how to deal with it because I don't get sick like this. So they kept me for 24 hours. Um, I had like four or six breathing treatments. I can't remember. Um, four, four pints of fluid. <sighs> yeah. I've never actually felt close to death, close to dying with a sickness before. Never, never in my life. I haven't really had any bad sicknesses, actually. No, the only time I've ever been hospitalized is for asthma when I was a young kid, one time, and then my babies. That's it. But I've never been hospitalized in, for any other reason. Or kept for sickness, never. But it was, it, it is really bad. So I've never gotten a flu shot in my life and I don't believe in it. And so I've never gotten it. But now I still don't believe in it. I still don't like it. I still don't want it. But this flu was absolutely the worst thing that I've ever been through in my life. It was terrible. I was so miserable. I don't ever, ever, ever want to go through that again. Feel that again. Experience that again. It was... I just... I can't even explain it. But anyways, so that's why I've been not uploading... And I asked my mom and my uncle to step in and do a video for me. I said, can you please, you know, I know my subscribers, my viewers, my friends, my family, whoever's watching me, you know, they're going to want something. So can you guys please do a video for me? They're like, heck yeah, we'll do it. So thank you, mom and big daddy. Thank you so much. That was very awesome of you guys. So Now that I'm feeling back to normal, sort of, getting there slowly but surely, this took me down for a week, you guys. Oh, my God. And then my daughter, Brooklyn, ended up getting it. I don't know how because I did not allow the kids in my room. I would not allow them near me. Um, I, I quarantined myself to my bedroom. They never even went in the bedroom. I don't know how my daughter got it, but she did. 
So then I ended up taking her to the hospital and she has the same thing. Flu type B with pneumonia. Oh my God, I've been so worried about her because she's so tiny and people are dying from this. So, but she's doing better too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For some reason, that's not good for people who can't breathe. That's one of the worst things you can do. What you need is fresh, cold air. That's the best thing. So I was talking to my mom on the phone and I'm like, I was like crying to her. I was like, I tried to sit in the bathtub or I, I sat in the bathroom and I ran a shower and I was you know, breathing in the hot steam. And I said it made me, my breathing worse. She goes, you don't ever do that. She goes, um, your grandmother had a COPD. I think that's what it's called. COPD. And she couldn't take showers because it would choke her up so bad. The doctor told her that she either has to spain, sp I can't talk, sponge bathe, or she has to take a cool shower, whichever she preferred. But she could not take a warm or hot shower because that steam would choke her up and where she couldn't breathe. And that's what it did to me. My God, it was so bad. So they redid my blood work again before they released me. And of course, my vital signs and all that. 120 over 80 was my blood pressure when I left there. Perfect. And my heart rate was, I think, 85. Perfect. And um, all my blood work came back perfect, except for my anemia. My anemia, you know, was still low. Um, let's see. Yeah, my blood sugar was perfect. Um, my sodium level was was finally normal, perfect. So she's like, you need to take your iron pills. You need to do that. If you don't, you're gonna end up getting blood transfusion someday because you're really anemic. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on all my medication for my flu, pneumonia, my anemia, and uh, they sent me home with a nebulizer and an inhaler. So, yes, I am finally back, you guys. The sauce queen is back, bitches. Ugh, it took a minute, but hey, I'm here now. So, And you know what? This is so freaking fabulous, but I can't eat it anymore. I have not really had an appetite. So, but this right here, this is not homemade soup. I'll be honest, <laughs> but the best canned soup, in my opinion, and I freaking love it, is Progresso Hearty Tomato. This is what this is. My God, it's so good. You don't even need to salt and pepper it. You can just put it, pour it in a can and eat it just like this. I promise you, try it, taste it. It's fabulous. And um, I added a can of stewed tomatoes to it and salt and pepper. Oh my God. And it's just so good. Mm -hmm. So my mom, dad and big daddy came up here. They didn't come up here cause <laughs> uh, the flu. <laughs> God, it's like, went through two, three people in this house. So finally everybody's on the mend and everything, everybody's doing well. Um, <laughs> they're walking around with masks and stuff and like gloves. We don't want to take this back to forward. It's so funny, but yeah. So I got more videos coming up, me and Big Daddy and me and my mom and Big Daddy. And my son Logan is going to do a mukbang with me as well. So we got some, Awesome videos coming your guys' way. And um, also, you guys, if you follow my son Logan on TikTok, um, 
I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be on a few of his TikToks. He's wanting me to, so I'm like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Like, I'm <laughs> what the heck? That's like for teenagers. That's like for you know kids in their uh, not kids, but young adults in their 20s and young 30s and whatever. It's not for 40 year old grandmas, okay? <laughs> and me and Logan started laughing, cracking up. But you guys, I am. I told him I would, whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a few TikTok videos with him. It's gonna be really, really funny, really good. And um, yeah, so if you guys wanna check that out, you should. Um, I posted it on all my social medias and stuff. What is TikTok is? And it's uh, Logan Everett 15. So be looking out for the sauce queen because she's going to be on there with her son. Okay? You're not going to want to miss that. I don't even know. We're going to do like a dancing one and then we're going to do like some funny one or something. I don't know. <laughs> but it's going to be good. Okay. Enough rambling. And yeah. Big Daddy and Seafood Boil with Hennessy is going to be coming up soon. And also my mama and my son. And before they leave and go back to Fort Worth, that's what we're going to be doing. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tomato soup, salad, and homemade grilled cheese with Texas toast. It was delicious. But, you know, if I was 100% um, myself, all this would be gone. You guys already know. But yeah, I just can't do it right now. All right. And please forgive the way I look because, yeah, I don't care. My hair is hideous. Whatever. All right. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video. Stay safe, blessed, wherever you're at in the world. And thank you so much for watching me and loving me. And I love you guys so much. And you guys, protect yourself. Wash your hands. Hand sanitizer. Wear a freaking mask if you have to go out and like really public e places who cares what people think wear a mask and be and stay healthy and safe um all right so i'll see you in the next one i love you guys bye